Can I ask um, for you to... <coughs> will that work? Um, <laughs> could you talk us through some of your different strategies around user-generated content across the different publications that we... Okay, I must apologise, I've got a copy cold, so that's why I'm not <coughs> maybe sounding as clear as I'd like to. Um, we think user-generated content is really important. Partly because, you know, so pragmatically, it generates a lot of content at a low cost. So you know, there's, just, there's just far more users than there are journalists, even in our biggest team, the first or fourth journalists. Um, but secondly, we, you know, we think um, community engagement and being part of the community and having the community actively engaged with us is a really important way of sort of future-proofing what we do. It sort of ties in the community to us. So, we think you know, it's a sign of the strength of what we're doing in the community if there's a lot of user-generated content there, if users are actively participating rather than just sort of passively, um, passively listening to what we're doing. Um, so we're looking at different tools. One of the things we're finding is that what we'd love, we, it, would not, it would be nice if it were the case that once we worked out how to do it and get lots of engagement and participation in one market, we could just roll that out in all our other markets. And unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be the case. We sort of, what we need to do for hairdressers that makes them participate and interact isn't the same thing as that we need to do for IT professionals or social workers or any of the other uh, communities that we have uh, interactions with. Um, what, one of the things, so, so we're trying to learn what are the common threads though that do go across all of these groups and, and we're trying to understand what, what we're sort of tentatively calling sort of the psychology of participation. What, you need to really understand the motivation of Participate. Whatever you want the audience to do, whether it's to discuss things in a forum or to rate your content, whatever it is you're trying to get them to do, you need to always ask the question, why? Why will they do that? What, what, what personally do they, what, what motivates them to want to do that? If there's nothing, then the chances are they won't do it. If the, and the, you can usually find something and you need to understand that so that you make sure that what you do on your site reinforces that. So for example, one of our markets is aviation. We want um, our uh, uh, aviation audience to actively contribute to the forum and discuss things on our forum. So one, one of the reasons it turns out why they want to do that is that they care about their profile amongst their peers, their status amongst their peers. If you're a pilot then you care quite a bit usually about what other pilots think about you. And so one of the motivations for contributing is it raises your status, your profile, if you're looked up to by the pilot, somebody who says interesting, sensible, valuable things in the forum. Um, so one of the things we try and do to reinforce that is um, in it, the, the, the little image that you get as part of your profile, one of the, the, one of the, one of the things they put on the flight one is you get a little um, rank, you get stripes to show what rank you are, and the more you participate, the better the quality of participation is rated by the people in the audience. Then the higher status you get, the more bars you get on your uniform. It's interesting to see how people's activity goes up when they're close to getting up to the next level, you know, getting the next bar on their shoulders. So little things like that can make a real difference. Um, in other markets, so, so discussion forums and picture sharing in particular in that market seems to work really well. Um, in other markets, we really struggle to get people to participate in that sort of forum type environment where there's no one single central voice where, where the interaction is all generated from below. And in other markets, we find it works better around some strong voices, around blocks. So, for example, in IT, we find that the interactivity seems to work better around blocks. We have strong voices by opinionated voices blogging, and then the discussion sort of hangs around those blogs, and also elsewhere on the web, on, you know, on other blogs, and in the discussions around other blogs. Um, and, in, and, and one of the things we're starting to do more and more in most of our markets is to reach outside, so that we're not just looking at user-generated content taking place on our own site, but we're looking at reaching out to where the users in those communities are already creating content, whether it's on... Um, Flickr or Facebook or Twitter and making sure that wherever they are, that's where we are too and that we're doing stuff that adds to the experience wherever they are and hopefully brings some of them back to our own content where we can make money out of it. But to be honest, yeah, we're, we're not too het up about driving people rapidly back to our own site. As long as we're doing something that the audience values, that raises the value of our brand, that raises the way they think about us, then even if it doesn't bring some immediate benefit driving people to the site, the hope is that in the longer term it will have some benefit in bringing people to site and home today. Um, but that, 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 but that we, we are finding that we have to learn market by market what you need to do to drive that interaction and it's not the same things that work in each market. And that's part of the skills of our editorial team is really understanding what, what the, not just what the audience are interested in, which is always the case, but how they like to interact and where they interact and what they're doing and tapping into that. 
Do you, do you have many um, community managers, people employed as community managers? Yeah, so we, we've restructured, and we, we, you know, this, will, this will be constant change, so we haven't got the right answer now, but we're, we're, we're in the process of changing all our roles and editorial structures. And one of the new roles we created, actually about three years ago, is community editor. It's in some markets we call community managers. And their responsibility is, they're, they're measured by the amount of interaction that happens, the amount of user-generated content, but also the quality of that content. So how much traffic does that user-generated content drive, or how much interaction does it drive itself? Um, the, the, the details of the way the role is structured does, again, depend market by market, but it seems to be quite successful the way we do it in some of the markets, where it works across print and web. So the same person is responsible for um, running the discussion forum, the picture sharing on the web, is the person who looks after the letters pages and the opinion pages in the magazine, and has that overall responsibility for the reaching out to the community. And one of the dangers is that, in some markets, the danger is that the rest of the people in the editorial team, they say, okay, well that attractivity stuff, that's their job, they can worry about that, and we can just go on and do what we used to do, which is publish stuff at the audience. And, you know, it's Actually, we think in all of our markets, it's important that all of the authority feel that they have a part to play in that interactivity and drive that interaction. But we've, like, those roles are quite important now, and you know, we've we've sort of rejigged the status to give them quite a high status. You know, these are quite senior editorial roles, and a couple of people have just recently moved into even more senior positions from those community editor roles, which sends out the right signals that if you move into a community editor's job, that is a a good place to go because it's going to get you into a more senior position in the organisation. It's quite interesting at the, um, <coughs> at the Guardian where uh, one of our graduates, Todd Nash, is a community uh, editor, or works in the community side there, uh, moderate, community moderator, I think it is. Um, and they um, explicitly uh, make, ba basically, if you publish an article in the section editor on the Guardian, you have to switch on comments. So you have to effectively take responsibility for that section rather than thinking it's the responsibility of, of the community section. Of the and, um, and they monitor journalists' contributions as well, so they can see how much um, individual journalists on the paper are contributing and be able to tell how much engagement there is, which I think is a really interesting... I think that's the right that. approach. Yeah. And we, <clears throat> yeah, we, we used to organise our team, so, so the sort of job task we have would be news reports, feature writers. And at first we thought, we could still keep these titles, as long as they worked across print and the web, then you could still be a news reporter. But actually, we're finding that those job titles are still fairly tied to the print process, because a lot of the things we do don't fall neatly into those categories. If you're taking part in an online discussion, is that news or features? You know, it doesn't fit naturally into it. If you're, if you're helping to build an interactive timeline, is that news or features? So we're, 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 we're starting to structure people's jobs around beats. Say, right, you cover that beat, and you are responsible for the way the site works in total around that topic. So whether it's news, features, discussion, you know, you're, if you're responsible for making sure that, there's, that you're doing the right sort of things to generate that sort of interactivity and discussion from your audience. And if that discussion isn't happening, you shouldn't be going to talk to the community manager except maybe to get some tips, but it's your responsibility to to generate that discussion in the topics that, that you're responsible for. But I think, you know, the organisational structures are going to be changing for a while yet because every time you think you've got it right, you know, the world moves again and you have to rejig it to fit the way the world's working. It seems to be, again, the BBC user generated content is another similar example. I'm talking to them, that's grown significantly. It's probably, I think it's about two people um, after the Asian tsunami, they saw that it was worth doing something around user generated content. So we had a couple of people in this kind of ex experimental hub dealing with user generated content. And then the July 7 bombings came and there was this massive influx, so we expanded it again. And it's now about 23 people. It's the biggest user generated content unit in the world. But they can see that it's probably going to start getting smaller as well as roles become more part of the news operation generally rather than a specialised unit. And, and they see that their role is going to become more kind of cutting edge and experimental and trying out completely new things rather than just, for example, dealing with texts and emails and finding something chilly or something.